Hello, I'm Ray Fleming Deneen. I'm founder and executive director of Climb Wyoming, a statewide nonprofit, and this is my colleague, Colleen Charette. She directs all the program training for staff statewide. And um, we've been in Wyoming for 25 years, and Climb Wyoming trains and places low-income single mothers in careers that successfully support their families. And it's really exciting to be here with Colleen to talk about what we do and that we love to do together. And I was thinking, uh, just talking about the mission mm -hmm. and how true we are to our mission. When you think about our mission, what do you think about? Um, I think it's interesting how our programming has developed over time that our goal absolutely is to um, provide work opportunities for the mothers that we serve. and. Um, that's always our focus and w what's been unique in as over the years as as it's developed is our ability to respond to uh, and adapt our trainings to the economic um, uh, demands of each of the communities that we're in so our ability to develop trainings really quickly that respond to uh, where we know the workforce is going to need mm -hmm. so we're all, all, um, as well a workforce um, solution. And so we know at the end of the program we will place women in jobs that will provide salaries that will help them um, support their families. And then through that, uh, the wraparound services and the support that we, su that we provide through the programming allow the women to um, address all the barriers in their lives that have gotten in their way up until this point so that we know they've gotten through the training and they're in a job placement and the, uh, these other um, barriers that have been in their lives and gotten in their way won't reappear. And so th I think that's what we can really attribute a lot of their, the long-term success to, the combination of this great training um, in addition to jobs work that we know are there and then we make sure that those women are successful in those jobs by providing this support. And I, I think about our, our mission because we've talked a lot about being really true to our mission when we say train and place. Mm -hmm. The job placement piece ties so closely to how we develop our training and how we decide which training we're going to do in which area of the state. And Wyoming, being as rural it is, as it is, it's tricky. From community to community, we really have to change how we work. And I, I feel like we've worked hard on mm -hmm. figuring out that piece. Yeah, and I think one of the, the things that has allowed us to do that is the caliber of staff that we um, uh, hire and train and support and their ability to really know their communities mm -hmm. and really be able to anticipate uh, what's coming down the pipeline in terms of employment demands in the, co in the communities. So um, we make a commitment to those women that they will be placed in jobs and we do whatever we have to do to make sure that that happens and we, we, we fulfill that commitment to them. Yeah, I was thinking about what we learned about our model during that recessionary period when mm. we were able to really place women in those non-traditional careers because of the demand in the energy in mm -hmm. industry in Wyoming. And then for that to drop out exactly, and know that we had to be flexible and responsive and knew from looking at the state and looking at the demands, we could only use health care. Mm -hmm. So for two years, we had to switch all our programs to health care because the women were not able to enter jobs in those energy exactly. industry. And I thought, I just thought that was such a testament to our flexibility. Mm -hmm. And I know you worked hard with the staff to try to help them understand how now you have to work with those healthcare employers. You have to mm -hmm. really get them in those jobs and change that focus. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was impressed with how you worked with the staff during that time. Thank you. I think the, um, the philosophy of the organization is built on ensuring we have really effective relationships across the board with our employers, with our trainers, with our staff, with the women that we serve. Mm -hmm. And those relationships and the ability and um, expertise with which our staff understand and value those relationships allow us to do, allow us to do that. And so um, they, the staff very quickly, we saw the economy kind of taking a nosedive and knew that truck driving and welding weren't, w w the, those jobs were not going to be there. So they went out immediately and began developing relationships with those medical and uh, healthcare employers and trainers and to say, what do you see happening? How can we put a training together? What works? How can we quickly um, get these women in, the, in that and just really switch the focus? 
and mm -hmm. our 87% graduation rate did not, did not diminish during that mm -hmm. time. So I, I felt That's like that was really a test to our model mm -hmm. and the strength of, of how we operate. I agree, something to be proud of. Yeah, thanks. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's um, talk a little bit more about the, um, just the model itself and how the women move through the program. I, I feel like you do so much of the hiring with the staff and the piece that you and I work really hard on is trying to figure out how to match staff skills with the needs of the women. And we know that it's, it's often hire, ha very difficult to hire someone that is not judgmental, mm -hmm. especially with that mental health arena. We hire only licensed mental health providers, but they also have to be able to work in a group because we do all our training in a group, and that's not an easy skill for even a licensed mental health mm -hmm. therapist. So I've just um, really watched you become more rigorous in your interviewing with staff and talk about why that's so important for our model. Well, I think um, it's helpful to, to stop and back up and, and think a little bit about the fact that we, it's very unique that, that we work with women in groups that they come into the to the program in a, in a group of 10 or 12. They begin the, the, the training together. They begin their training with CLIMB together. Um, and there's something magical about that part in that um, they all have common uh, experiences. They've made a commitment to make a change in their lives. And they have one another to rely on for, for that. So the group component is magical and we don't really talk about it very much and mm -hmm. it's something that the staff doesn't have to do much about but just sort of hold and and make space for so I think we don't talk about that much because we take it for granted but the whole experience is based on this concept of, of, gr of them uh, having this experience in a group and then under the umbrella of that each woman is treated as a as an individual she's respected and regarded as an individual adult who's making decisions in her own life for herself and the wraparound services and the support come specifically for her. Uh, they're designed to match whatever her barriers are, whatever her needs are. And she and the mental health provider, as well as the job placement person, um, have a conversation about that. And, and her, her thoughts and her feelings and her experience, we meet her where she is mm -hmm. and help her navigate whatever barriers ha have gotten in the way, her, her dreams, what she, she wants to have happen. And so um, it takes very special staff to understand how, um, how, to, how to walk through that experience with a woman through the group experience as well as through her individual support and her individual work experience. Um, we're really not about telling uh, folks what they should do and what they shouldn't do. We're really about listening to them, providing some, some guidance, some options, helping her think for herself. And what I love most about the success of our women, we have a tremendous success rate. And when they leave, they understand it's not it wasn't the CLIMB staff that made them successful, they understand it, it was themselves. And so the staff are really specially trained and it takes a very special person to constantly help that woman know, no, this isn't us doing this for you. You're finding your own resources. And um, so then she can fly afterwards. We're really about helping them become self-sufficient and that's not just about self-sufficiency in terms of finances, of course, we want them to be self-sufficient financially, but they're personally self-sufficient when they leave. They understand that they're, they have a deep well of resources um, themselves. And we just know through the years that um, that takes a very special staff and it takes a lot of support um, and um, tra ongoing training. Mm -hmm. And it also is what we know makes the difference when we're looking at two years out, we have Mm -hmm. Close to 80% of those women employed, mm -hmm. and they are—they have doubled their monthly wage income. And for those non-traditional careers, welding, the yeah. truck drivers, they've uh, tripled their mm -hmm. monthly wage income, and that's two years out. So I feel especially excited to know that even though it's costly mm -hmm. to hire that kind of staff and keep them on board, I really do know that makes a difference. Yeah. And I think it's exciting to think as you talk about two years out, um, what we're looking at in, in terms of enhancing um, our graduate services. So when a woman comes through the program, uh, the, the, the program is very intensive and, and reasonably short. Um, and, but once she leaves and she's in work, she's, she never leaves us. She, she continually 
um, it is welcome and encouraged to, to come back and, and have a touchstone experience with the staff who kind of were on the journey with her. And we're finding now that because they stay connected with us, we have an, the capacity to help them even more and provide other kinds of um, support for them. And so I'm really excited about what we're thinking about enhancing those services mm -hmm. and that, that phase of the program and really helping them continue to uh, gain self-sufficiency both financially and personally. Mm -hmm. I was thinking the only reason we're able to do this is is because of our uh, both public and private funding mm -hmm. partners mm -hmm. and um, es especially thinking about the Department of Family Services and the Department of Workforce Services and how closely they work together to make sure that they continue to fund programs such as ours mm -hmm. and that they appreciate the wraparound services mm -hmm. and how expensive that ends up making our program, but I think we're fortunate in Wyoming that uh, they know that makes a difference. Yeah, I agree, and I think the the great part of that is that they understand and appreciate and are willing to fund us because the outcomes speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. So we were, you know, I, I hear from them often in terms of partners is that you really can't argue with what's working. And at the end of the day, they understand it saves the state a tremendous amount of money, and, and that's just, um, Th that's just data that's mm -hmm. that's working in our favor. So um, I think they appreciate uh, how we keep track of that, how we report that, how we have the evidence for that as well. Yeah, we're at that two-year mark. We're looking at a significant decrease in the SNAP food mm -hmm. stamp program, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. public assistance piece mm -hmm. that we see a significant decrease. And what I know and you know with knowing the women is that they're contributing members of the community. Absolutely. And I know they love to be off government assistance, yeah. that they're paying taxes, yeah. that they're part of the community and part of the system. So I get really excited for them. Some of my about them. favorite stories are women who are placed in, in jobs through the CLIMB program, stay in that same position for five years, and then are in the position to hire a CLIMB mom. Yeah. They are in a supervisory position and then they take on this mentorship. And uh, I love to hear the women who are in truck driving talk about that. And they really love to bring other women in. and teach them how to sort of navigate that whole environment and uh, are really opening up that career. They're kind of trailblazers, opening up that career for other women and um, uh, to have them in that position to, to give back and mentor is really that's special to watch. And our favorite part is talking about our graduates and the successes they've had and, and the women that uh, we've been able to talk with through the years and I always think of Michelle and where she's come. So could you tell the audience more about Michelle. Sure, and, and Michelle just represents one of hundreds and hundreds of women, but it's, it, it makes it more personal to think about them sort of one at a time in their personal mm -hmm. stories. And Michelle came to CLIMB um, many, many years ago when I was a program director specifically, and she was in a lot of trouble. She was, um, she was struggling with drug abuse. She had, uh, her children were in care, so they were in the foster system. Uh, she was. She had court and probation officers, and she was in a lot of trouble, and was really probably about to head to prison, and uh, and lose her kids permanently. And she uh, came to the to the climb program and said, "I don't want this to happen. I want something different for my life." And we are, the climb was able to say, "Okay," and whatever that means for you, we're going to help you figure that out. And um, she was able to, over years, slowly but surely, it wasn't over years, certainly the, the, the training and the placement happened in the time frame that CLIMB always uh, utilizes, which was about six months. But she, um, the success of her is that she, she got her confidence. We helped her walk one step at a time through navigating her legal situation, navigating her situ situation with her children, advocating for her, helping the court system. Um, understand that she had made a decision to do the right thing and, and, and to really change her life and we were able to help her through that. Um, she had very intensive training with CLIMB. She was placed um, in an office career job that she never expected in a million years that she would be able to do. She was working at a fast food, not a fast food, like a mini mart uh, prior to that below minimum wage um, and usually evening hours. So that's where she was working originally, making trying to make ends meet. Um, and so she was uh, placed in a real estate office. Um, she's still in that same job and that was probably seven years ago. She has people working for her. Her children have transformed their lives. 
um, she was able to be the kind of mom that she knew she wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And this was, um, you know, I think climb is the gift that keeps on giving. The, the, the intensive intervention and where the, the money is spent is very intensive and it's up front. But we continue to support her. Mm -hmm. She continues to give back to the organization. And her kids um, th are thriving. And I think the pattern of poverty and abuse and drug abuse uh, in this particular case um, probably would have continued and that whole family turned around so it's really not just about changing one life it's mm -hmm. about impacting a family uh, for generations yeah that's Michelle yeah. hi I'm Lisa Washington Thomas the branch chief for the technical assistance branch in the office of family assistance I want to thank you for watching our video brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Administration for Children and Families, Office of Family Assistance.